Hello and happy Wednesday if you're listening to this live. If you're not, whatever day of the week it is, I hope you're having a great day and a great week. I'm Nancy Teeter, registered dietitian nutritionist, and I'm here to give you this week's nutrition tip. And many of my nutrition tips come from questions from viewers. And one viewer had asked me, tell me about the health benefits of wine. Well, before I could really answer that question, I really needed to research the health effects of alcohol in general. So let me talk about that. First of all, one thing is we love to hear good news about our bad dietary habits. And that statement is more true than ever when it comes to alcohol. In preparing for this video, I, I spent time reviewing many studies that have been done over the last four years in regards to alcohol consumption. And I want to give you some information about that so you can make informed health choices. I will begin by saying that all things related to diet, it really matters what we do 90% of the time. So unless a person is truly an alcoholic, there isn't any evidence that says we have to be completely abstaining from alcohol. But um, I will say we tend to not want to pay attention to the definitions that are provided for us in regards to drinking. So, for example, if I said to you, are you a heavy drinker? Do you consider yourself a heavy drinker? Likely is you would shake your head and say, no, I'm not a heavy drinker. But let me give you the definitions. The U.S. Center for Disease Control defines moderate drinking as one drink per day for a woman and two drinks per day for a man. Now, the definition of a drink is five ounces of wine, 12 ounces of beer, or one and a half ounces of spirits. Now, in the studies I read, heavy drinking is defined as eight or more drinks per week for women and 15 or more for men. So we can say that if a woman consumed two glasses of wine five days out of seven, she'd be classified as a heavy drinker. So just put that into perspective of your habits. To make sense of some of the conclusions in the studies, it's also helpful to understand the difference between relative risk and absolute risk. Absolute risk is the, uh, the number of people affected in a population of any condition. It can be you know, getting hit by a car crossing the street, getting struck by lightning, or contracting a certain form of cancer. It's the numbers per say 100,000 people. But the relative risk is a percentage of that population. So let's say that the, um, the risk of dying from a particular condition is 2%. That's a relative risk. And now we change the condition, the situation, and uh, say out of behavior that increases the risk to 4%, you've doubled the relative risk. But what was the absolute risk? Say for every 100,000 people, only one person dies of the condition. And by adding a particular behavior, two in 100,000 people die. We still have a pretty low number of people dying. So we need to be considerate of, of relative risk, but absolute risk are numbers we really need to pay attention to. But I can tell you for sure, the more alcohol you consume, the higher the risks of health issues and the risk of death. Based on comprehensive international study, regardless if you're male or female, if you have more than one drink a day, you're likely consuming too much alcohol. In 2018, researchers studied the impact of alcohol consumption on 23 health conditions. These problems included suicide tendencies, tuberculosis, liver cirrhosis, cardiovascular disease, eight different types of cancer, as well as transportation-related injuries and other accidents. They reported that 
per 100,000 people, the risk of experience health problems increased with the use of alcohol. So without alcohol, the, the risk of experiencing one of these 23 problems was 914. Add alcohol to the picture, it increased to 918 per 100,000 people. Now, if we double the intake of alcohol to two drinks a day, the risk jumps to 977 per 100,000. So the change in the absolute risk is, is a bit insignificant for one drink a day, unless you're one of those people who died. You know, we love good news, and especially as it relates, it relates to longevity. So let's talk about a study about wine consumption, or actually drink consumption, alcohol consumption, and longevity. There was a study published in July of 2019 that reported that seniors who are moderate or occasional drinkers live longer than their peers who don't drink any alcohol at all. They collected data from nearly 8,000 men and women who were born between 1931 and 1941. And those folks provided researchers with information about their drinking habits as they recall them since 1992. The problem was that this and other population studies classify the people who quit drinking because they got sick as non-drinkers. So they may have already had a health condition when they died of not drinking. So this is a problem of reverse causation. Instead of abstaining leading to poor health, it was poor health that led to abstention. Also confounding the data is other behaviors like diet. For example, light drinkers of the group may be more likely to enjoy a glass of red wine or white wine with a piece of grilled salmon and a plate of veggies rather than a cheeseburger and fries. And so that it was the food that made the drink appear protective. In the case of alcohol, we really can't randomize controlled trials, so we do have to rely on population studies. We always have to take the results with a, a good perspective on what else might be going on and understand that the results are not causal, that one thing didn't cause another. Also, in regards to the study that I was talking about, the researchers acknowledged that associations indicating potential health benefits of moderate drinking are increasingly viewed with skepticism and that the role of moderate drinking and mortality continues to be debated. And there are many health conditions for which no safe dose of alcohol has been found. And this is the, the position of the national, international um, oncology group. The, and one group is the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. They conducted a survey with 4,016 Americans. And they found that by increasing the amount of alcohol, there was an increase in the cancer risk. Now, drinkers face higher risk than non-drinkers for developing cancer of the throat, larynx, esophagus, breast, liver, and colon. And the more you drink and the longer you drink, the more likely you're going to have one of these, these diseases related to alcohol consumption. And heavy drinking can put you at five times the risk faced by non-drinkers for mouth and throat cancer, as well as esophageal cancer. But rec rec recognize that Five times means that if one in 100 people get a certain cancer, five times means five in 100 will be affected. So always keep those, those absolute numbers in perspective. But let's talk about breast cancer because it's of ultimate concern to women. The absolute risk of a 40-year-old woman contracting breast cancer in the next 10 years is 1.45%. And that amounts to one woman in 69. 
According to ASCO, the relative increased risk due to one daily drink of wine or beer increases the risk of premenopausal cancer by about 5% and postmenopausal cancer by about 9%. But again, that's a 5% increase over the 1.45. So in numbers, it's not that big a number change. Also recognize that eating a healthy diet may modulate the risk of alcohol consumption. Although alcohol increases the risk of breast cancer, a fiber rich diet can have the opposite effect. So alcohol has been shown to increase estrogen, one of the sex hormones that, and that increases the risk of breast cancer. But when we eat fiber rich foods, fiber binds to the estrogen in the colon and flushes out of the body. So, even though there's not any level for alcohol consumption that's absolutely safe, we can protect ourselves somewhat through our overall diet and lifestyle. So as I finish up this episode, I want to talk about two other conditions, gum disease and stroke. The New York University School of Medicine did a study and they found that daily drinkers had fewer of the normal bacteria that are known to check the growth of harmful bacteria in the mouth. And thus, they ended up with higher levels of risk of gum disease. And that then related to an increased risk of heart disease and cancers of the head, neck, esophagus, and pancreas. So it's a change in the mouse microbiome that is affecting overall health. As far as stroke goes, there was a review done in Sweden in partnership with Cambridge University in the UK. They published their findings in 2016. And their study suggests that consuming one or two alcoholic drinks daily appears to protect against the most common type of stroke. That's the ischemic stroke. And then it, but it also increases the risk of the less common type. But if there are two or more drinks a day, it increases the risk of both types of stroke. So as I close up this video, I just want to say, if you're going to drink, make sure that you do it at what is considered the moderate level. And I encourage you that if you aren't drinking now, don't start for the health benefits. If you do drink, you might want to opt for red wine since it does provide some antioxidant benefits because of its resveratrol content. Also eat lots of veggies and make sure your diet contains lots of natural fiber in the form of beans and whole grains. So thank you for watching this video today. I hope you have a great day. Remain healthy, happy, and I encourage, hope that you will tune in the next time I go live. I'm going to end for today and say Nancy out.